Okay, we're now at the Bryce Gallery for the Occupy the Arts Action Event. We have some of these artists. So this is supposed to be dedicated to the, the inspiration of what our people uh, in Taos, New Mexico have been inspired by the Occupy movement. So we're going to give a visual. There are to be some, these are some young artists that have made contributions. This is called the Late Monopoly Cap Capitalism Warhog Baiting Blues. Explosive. Some of the artists will be here later, is my understanding, to uh, speak their poetry, music, and the arts. One time somebody told me that they didn't think that art, the arts, were political. I don't know any artist that doesn't feel deeply for the land, the people, their voice, and express themselves in creative measures. Here we have a musician getting ready to play. And what's your, uh, could I get your name? My name's Carl Stewart. Carl Stewart. Carl Stewart. Thank you. And what are you going to be playing? Uh, a variety of my original material. Rock on. Thank you. <laughs> this is this is pretty interesting. <laughs> Incredibly hard working group of people. White Hawk, who's standing right here. Liam, who is pouring yep. your wine. Yeah, I got dark uh, right before the Sigrid Erza, who is talking to someone and they can't hear me. And uh, who else do we have? Well, we have Hank and Gaia, uh, done incredible work. And Ty Hannigan. And myself, Linda Fair. And we're thrilled, thrilled that you're here. Um, I just want to tell you, you're going to see a lot of different art and a lot of different voices in the poets as the evening goes on. We have people here from age 15, I believe, to 83. It's a pretty wide uh, variety of views of the world and that we have all managed to work together is kind of an incredible feat, and maybe it says something about the possibilities for democracy. I'm not sure. Um, so I am going to hand the microphone over to Hank, if I can find him, and he's going to briefly tell you what's what's going to happen here tonight, and then we're going to get on with it because we got a lot of 
lot of uh, good stuff to listen to. And come. Thank you so much for coming. Ah, hi everybody. Um, let's see. Start out with God is going to make um, a little announcement, and um, then it'll be my turn. So welcome everybody. I just wanted to tell you very briefly about the organization We Are People Here, which is the organization that's sponsoring this event. And it's a brand new organization in Taos. And we're, we're, we're a multi-issue organization and we want to work closely with other organizations to revive and, and create a strong, vibrant democracy and to work to create very strong, sustainable communities. And we're working on a number of different issues, and we'd be very happy if you'd sign up on our email list. It's over, it's over on the table, and there's also a description of the organization. And we meet monthly, and we have committees that meet really regularly are doing a lot of good work. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you. Okay, um, I'd like to mention that uh, we have a guitarist, um, Carl Stewart, who is playing whenever there's a pause. We want to thank him for being here. Um, let's see, a uh, quick little announcement. Craig Barnes, who started We Are People Here down in Santa Fe, um, is going to be here to give a talk and a slideshow. Um, on Tuesday at 6.30. Uh, then we're going to be, the next day, Wednesday, we're going to have uh, a movie, Inside Job, and big screen here. So it should be a nice little event. That's at 7 o'clock on Wednesday of this week. So we're trying to like fill up the week with exciting little things that uh, will bring people in to look at the work, to read the poetry, and to think about um, Occupy and movement kinds of thoughts. Um, now, the way we're going to run this evening is um, we're going to we're going to perform every one of these poems around the bend here. And since you can you see that they're long and um, there's 23 of them, and then there's uh, 23 pieces of art. We'd like, we're going to have to uh, move along quite briskly, so this will be the end of, of uh, general announcements, I guess. Um, to start off with, we've got uh, an outside action that uh, um, Agnes Chavez has put together a six-minute presentation outside, and then um, so everybody will go out there. I'll uh, I'll tell you all the people involved in her in her project, and then when you come back in, um, we'll start cruising around, uh, hearing all the poems. And and one of the poets was so anxious to be involved that she's going to Skype her poem in um, around seven o'clock. So um, the uh, Agnes Chavez piece as Lila Johnston as a poet, Alessandro Sacoya as the coder, um, Paul Rooney is doing music, and Aiden Bain is a projectionist. So I uh, encourage everybody while we re-enter the Middle Ages, where middle-aged men in well-tailored, clean-cut suits brought, bought power with money. But don't worry, it's all crisp, white-collared dollars, and boy, and they won't let the 99 buy any of their time. We're too rugged for Wall Street, and our feet are too worn to mean anything. Robin Hood was right. He made way for a middle class and a middle life, taking what the rich should have just been giving. But now the middle class is back to the streets, bringing obvious traces of a once well-lived, well-earned life. And we're starting to wake up to the idea that things won't change until we change them. Yeah. There is power in numbers, after all, and there is power in convictions. 
You think this is the first time? We've fought a battle with our nation since the Great Depression, and until we end this recession, we'll keep feeding the needy, playing Little John to this Robin Hood operation. <clears throat> we'll hold our hands high like beacons in mass numbers to, sing to signal yes or no, because they won't let us use a megaphone. And no matter how peaceful the gathering, the police are still waiting in the wings, prowling like poachers to beat on running people who had only done the crime of hoping. And I realize that money comes with power, and power comes with corruption, but we have a willingness to end that pattern because we value the lives of humanity and we want to one day hold out that white dove of peace and become, for once, a truly free country. So, so let's write recipes for Robin Hood. <clears throat> let's tell them how to make love with the ladle, how to spread convictions over toast, and how to make freedom last for an entire nation of people, because we want to taste it for ourselves. Mine's called Rasta Barbie Joins Occupy Wall Street. <laughs> Up here? Okay. <laughs> Three times sold, given, recycled, too good to throw away. Plastic tucked into plastic, hung on my doorknob with relief. Reminders of uselessness and waste, hint of moribund cultures and lives. Greed wounds hemorrhage. Texas tea and yellow cake poison, all things wet. Money slicksters press to digitate. Horrid bonfires eat desperate young. Spaniards plaque, pack plazas. Russians brave Putin. We are dying. We have no future. Goldfish flames flicker love scales in my throat. My granddaughter, dandelion fluff atop our bronze apis, long. Will her gentle sweep fan our resolve? Eager to believe, I sigh and consign her to fleeting bravery. No children slept under my heart, yet my grandchildren, these glorious beings, Fierce and peaceful, brilliant beyond my hope, stream steadfast and clear into our world. September 17th, beautifully timed to heal 10 years of grieving, 10 millennia of slavery, 10 geologic ages of suffering. My holy purpose, vociferate, stop, hurting unarmed people. Occupy is sovereign. They don't need my opinions. Let them grow into themselves, their future, and their integrity. I await their return as I anticipate lilacs. You're fine, Robin. Okay. Last night, my founding father sent in a declaration of independence. He sent in his resignation to a disrespectful system of assistance. In a sure voice on the kitchen tiles, he took his stance. Sons, I've resigned. But keeping his distance to remind us that we are administrative shit-takers, prison-laying bricklayers, gravel rakers, societal peace fakers, we aren't beggars. No McDonald paper cup wallets on Wall Street, or was it Sesame Street? Because the last time I checked, it seemed to be run by Big Bird Brother and the fucking Muppets. Puppets in business suits, when they fall, they got their pet federal parachutes. Shooting die, time to tame Japanese typhoons into American tycoons. They're moving cartoons, playing our democracy with such strategy, making it more like a monopolized mediocracy. So what's in your wallet?
Is that where you keep your values? Sneak your salutations that sell you? These corporations will buy you. Seeing that they'll cut down the rainforests, tallest tree to shortest, birdsong by birdsong, till there's nothing left but Amazon.com. But don't get me wrong. It's all fine and dandy as long as the Democrats are the majority, as long as the Republicans are the authority, as long as electing a libertarian president is top priority. Who cares about we the people in our society? It's just a cat game of cat and mouse, no. A game of black Democrat in the White House, no. A game of long division segregation between Hispano and Caucasian, Aki and Taos. Mm. Also, to the answer of the million dollar question, are we still the people? when the government only lets its citizens look through a peephole at what it's doing, at, why, at what liar Mildred Murdoch it's promoting, at what Honest Assange it's imprisoning, at what crystal-cut third-world country it's screwing, and what are we the people doing, while the jackpot crockpot of a sinister political plot is still stewing. We're hiding, no doubt. Behind our soft porn, count the count, vampire books, Oprah soap operas, time to get my face off Facebook, cause we're wasting too many angry looks oh, yeah. on Cookie Obama, Monster Osama, while failing to see our own nation's crooks. Yes. Are we still the people? When loophole after loophole allows corporations that don't ask why, don't bleed, don't cry, don't seem to see with the human eye, get a taste of the American pie. Yeah, these are our rights. Bleeding red, white, and blue between fingertips, pleading not to make a tyranny of the next hotshot clothing company. Are we still the people? When 2012 AD rolls around like Jesus in the ground, because even 2,000 years after death, Lucifer laughs at us, crucified on the dollar sign. Woo! I take yours and you take the tar sands pipeline. Sorry, John Boehner, but the House of Rep Representatives ain't a place to be freewheeling, dealing out political policy of any kind, and it looks like your time's almost up. So go smoke a roach with Oscar the Grouch, cause it may just be a long time on the welfare office's waiting room couch. We crouch, afraid, to embarrass ourselves in front of the land of the free and the home of the brave. But or what are we doing? We're digging our nation's grave. Just cause we haven't uh, just because we didn't have enough raid when Occupy Wall Street came down with the plague. Too many cockroaches to stop the protests. Did that rain on your parade? Let's cut the charades and send in our second declaration of independence from, child, from childish Sesame Street politics. Because it will take all of us to quit this game of Monopoly and claim back our American inheritance. Yeah! It is done. The sun is conquering the sky, and my grandmother and I are heaving prayers at the horizon. Show me something unbeautiful, she, she says, and I will show you the veil over your eyes and take it away, and you will see Hoja all around you, inside of you. This morning, my grandmother is teaching me the meaning of Hoja. Although there is no direct translation from the Nehbizar, the Navajo language, into English, every living being knows what Hoja means. For Hoja is in every drop of rain, every eyelash, every leaf on every tree, every feather on the bluebird's wing. Hoja is undeniable beauty. Hoja is in every breath that we give to the trees, and in every breath that they give to us in return, Hojo is reciprocity. My grandmother knows the meaning of Hojo well, for she speaks a language that grew up out of the desert floor like red sandstone monoliths that rise like arms of the earth into the sky, praising creation for all of its brilliance. Hojo is remembering that you are a part of this brilliance. It is finally accepting that yes, you are a sacred song that brings the Dejende Ne'e, the gods, to their knees in an almost unbearable ecstasy. Hojo is remembering your own beauty. And my grandmother knows this well. 
for she speaks the language of a Luca Chukai snowstorm, the sound of hooves hitting the earth on birthdays, for my grandmother is a midwife and she is fluent in the language of suffering mothers, of joyful mothers, of handing glowing newborns to their creator. Pojo is not something you can experience on your own, the eagles tell us, as they lock talons in the stratosphere and fall to the earth as one Hojo is inter beauty. And my grandmother knows Hojo well, for she speaks the language of the male rain that shoots lightning boys through the sky, pummels the green corn children, and huddles the horses against the cliff sides in the early afternoon. She also speaks the language of the female that sends the scent of dust and sage into our homes and shoots rainbows out of and into the earth. Us we know what Hoja means. And each and every one of you knows what Hoja means. And deep down, we know what Hoja does not mean. Like the days we walk in sadness, like the days we live for money, the days we live for fame, the days we live for tomorrow. Like the day the Spaniards came, climbed down from their horses and asked us if they could buy the mountains. We knew this was not Hoja, but we knew we could make it Hoja once again. So we melted their silver swords and their coins with fire and buffalo hide bellows and reshaped them into squash blossom jewelry pieces and strung it around their necks. We took the helmets straight off of their heads and turned it into a fearless beauty. Hojo is the healing of broken bones. Hojo is the prayer that carried us through genocide and disease. It is the prayer that will carry us through global warming, through this global fear that has set our souls on fire. This morning, my grandmother is teaching me that the easiest and most elegant way to defeat an army of hatred is to sing it beautiful songs until it falls to its knees and surrenders. It will do this, she says, because it has finally found a sweeter fire than revenge. It is from heaven. It is from Hojo. This morning, my grandmother is saying to the colors of the sky at dawn, Hojo na hasle, Hojo na hasle, Hojo na hasle, and beauty is restored again. It is dawn, my friends. Wake up the night is over. Carl Rove, Strauss Levy, uh, three bad guys that everybody knows. Sonny Morris doing a piece uh, related to Citizens United Devouring Democracy. but all revolutionaries in their own way. And I took lines and fragments of their speech. Um, most of them are no longer living. They're living through their words. Uh, except for one, Diane de Prima. But I couldn't resist her, her phrase. So it's in here. So lines and fragments pieced together. This is called the Democracy Exper Experiment for the Occupiers. They are walking on a great piece of wallpaper, 
a liberation ward, this shredding away. For we in our youth did these things, the mind-forged manacles I hear, the genuine pain that keeps everything awake is a tiny, infinite burn on the innocent eyes of other systems. All this and not ordinary, not unordered in not resembling. A corporation is a body without a soul. The only war is the war against the imagination. The dew when it settles on the blades. What is the name of all that wounds us? The same as that which suffers. Love is a direction. The intelligence can only be led by desire. The fire distributes feelings. The crossbeam showers down centuries. Did we run out of things or just a name for you? Spirals, which way to turn? Fragility in open space, in council, carrying objects, in the forest. For the vision as we see, or have seen, or imagined it, or in the past evoked, or conjured up, or had conjured by another, was usurped. And all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared, subservience, a nail that will not come out. Listen, white dog of the north, black serpent of the south, there are swimstick words for pushing away shark. We are standing now, my country and I, hair in the wind, my hand puny in its enormous fist. Go to the harbor, go to the tents, hard is necessity, fair is the world. I sing the ache. Therefore, protect them. Strong, implacable spirits here. Hearts are not had as a gift, but hearts are earned. The labor is a sober one, an operation capable of changing the world. Only then, and not before, it grows such sweet things out of corruptions. Is there anything human without imperfection? A soul whose intentions are good. Of course there is movement, what people call movement, within the frame. The wheel on which our silence is first broken. It fills us to the brim. We arrange it, it perishes. We arrange it again and perish ourselves by such slant slope of lights toward what should be watching, doubting, revolving, blazing and meditated. All thought emits a throw of the dice. We saw lightning and that was the guns. And then we heard the thunder and that was the big guns. And then we heard the rain falling. We stars, we stars. We wandering, glistening, singing dust. What strength the reed. In the midst of beings as a whole, an open place. Or not. I am certain of nothing but the holiness of the heart's affections and the truth of the imagination. Like that of a blackbird's song. Light touches you only to shift into iridescence, patiently, as someone threading beads. For Pierre de Latre and the rest of us. If it is our nature, if it is our nature to sing of the cradle endlessly rocking as Walt Whitman had it, to sing with Mary Oliver a red bird firing up the winter landscape. Fireflies like spaceships invading the summer orchard. Blue-bodied bees humming in the cherry blossoms. 
the neighbors' pigeons flocking over our new corn, the silent garden snake swallowing a fly. Then it is also our feminine mystique to dance to the drumming of Mother Earth, that throbbing within every creature living on our planet. Therefore, now we call to all those too long inside their houses and their heads. <laughs> Loosen up your tight fingers. Step out of your binding shoes. Tear off the earphones of alphabets and numbers and hear the drumming, the ceaseless throbbing of every living heart in this universe. Come outside, feel the hope and the wonder and dance. Now we are dancing, singly, in pairs, whole streets, whole blocks, districts, towns, cities. We dance, we dance, we dance. We dance because we can. We dance, we dance, we dance. We dance because we can. Thank you. Paintings here, the one on my my left, if you're facing it, it's full of rain and change and magic. This is called Rain Song. It's raining thick gray New York rain. Rain that fills the gutters, that soaks my coat, seeps down the back of my neck. And when I finally climb on the bus, the rain is steam rising off my shoulders. The bus driver has his hands on the large wheel, is urging the huge animal of the bus forward, is stroking the wheel, whispering or praying as we make our way through the pouring, the honk and screech of traffic muted. We are all swaying in a steamy bus. The light begins its change from red to green. Look at the passengers. Our faces are beginning to blur, as if there is a crying rising in us, as if we are being filled with rain. Rain is tapping on our organs, is filling the crevices of our lungs, liver, heart, heads, and our craniums, the eight bones of the wrist, our particular fingernails. <clears throat> The rain outside is carrying on, is almost wild, pouring itself into the world, wordless and troubled. And we, who are almost sheltered in this steam and fog and huffing bus, the earth in us is rising, as if the rain is wearing us down to humid dirt, as if we could begin again. Perhaps we could change become someone else, empty our pockets, change our clothes, hair, the color of our skin, become a man, woman, grow to childhood again, or age so quickly our bones would be made of light and we would glide down the rain-soaked streets, the gleam of rain still on the tar, on the huge billboards, the streetlights surrounded with halo, night, coming on, and the stars and moon would be bright and clean and pure, and there would be no war, and the hungry would be fed, and the children loved as we would be loved, and oh, life is good and will be different, won't it, won't it, when we step off the bus in the rain. Nice to see you all here. <laughs> What's being asked is that in each moment we do something awkward. Stumbling will be the least of it. Could we start with stopping? 
Stop trying to become impermeable. Admit the unending flows between us, our interwoven destinies. I could stop and ask, can fury be the voice of love? Stop being struck dumb by the damage. When the accusations begin, I can try to close the distance suspiciousness makes. Say, my heart aches with you. I see how rage holds you together, protects the thin body bag of muscle, sinew, bone, heart. I see a tender loneliness pooled in blue-gray eyes, something trampled. Can I hunt the truth, no apologies, when I meet another of my kind? And who isn't my kind? Tell how I too am wrapped in my comfort cocoon, stricken by too much to lose, as the bank president slips from private, from private car to private elevator, timed perfectly for his arrival, carries him to private office, to devious dreams, never rubbing up against sour breath or sticky hands or tripping on debris. Mr. President, let's not lose our dreaming this way. I could confide in you, admit daily capitulation to the unacceptable. And here, the list is too long. But shall we make it together? Not for remorse, but to fuel our refusal. The best mornings, I allow a grief to wash through, to know the day for what it is, feel brimming thank you to small downy woodpecker, chickadee. Can this brimming bring me to inhabit with you in clumsy awkwardness the margins from which we can stand and push? Uh, Lenny asked me to uh, say a few words for his photograph. Um, he couldn't be here tonight. So Lenny says, Speak the, into the mic. Put, put, put it right up on your mouth. The throw of your heart image represents for me the idea that before anything can happen in our lives, towns, country, that commitment of the heart must happen first. The movement towards that which we desire must come first before anything can follow and take us toward the goal or dream. Of course, this happens on an individual basis first, and then like-minded, like-spirited people will join us. Join us in our intimate lives, our creative lives, and in our community and national movements. I salute and honor all who throw their hearts over the fence for righteous causes. The dark story of a sky. The dark story of a sky covers a secret brightening. Trees sway, their limbs articulating a timeless human watch. For some acts, there are no rehearsals. In a moment of stillness, lovers breathe what is not speakable. Then all too soon, the bird startles and takes flight. Before the pistol was raised, my heart leapt the starting gate, landing on the bright spot in front of me, the dazzling coin of my existence. At my heels, uncertainty dogged me, muttering all the way her loud and cautious descent. Barred from vision, beyond the barrier fences, lay the undefended lands of mystery herself. 
The subversive silence of this winter was upon me. It was the place I had come to. I have loved for all the wrong reasons, and I have failed to subdue the one tenderness of impossible fragility, this savage, ruined heart. Reliably unmanageable, defiantly sacred, now raving to an untrampled snow. Drive your whiteness into me. Throw me high and over, for I am your heart breaking, once claimed and still running loose. Right. I like pull this off. <laughs> So, uh, my poem is called Late Monopoly Capitalism, Warthog Baiting Blues. And uh, Bowden's going to play a little ukulele accompaniment, I hope. Yeah, I got this one. And, and, sp and speak as loud as you can, okay? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, I'm going to wait for Bowden to chime in with his uke. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead, go ahead, Bowden, play. My ukulele, a little ditty. My dog has fleas. Wish I was a flea on the bloated, wormy, hairy, moribund mass, sucking the copious blood, living my flea life, flea family, flea weddings, birthday parties, eating flea goodies. Wearing sporty flea glasses. Who had me this fiducia? This bow? This silver butcher knife? I stay at range of those pointy tusks, and swollen eyes, unpredictable hostility, keep intact my dignity, fling my particle at history, strump my ukulele. be part of this and I encourage each one of you to do whatever you love to do best to be part of the Occupy movement. That's the beautiful thing about it to me because I'm not one to go out and march and, and do those kind of things but I love to paint and so my painting is our Mother Earth moving into the fifth dimension with the free energy Taurus form. And if you notice, the um, I didn't do this on purpose, but it's also a heart when I put in the energy lines of that. And two of my friends wrote poems, and neither one of them could be here tonight. So I'm going to read this one, and I encourage you to come and read this one. This is by Elise Bell Anima. That which I was, I am not. That which I am, I'm not sure of. That which I am becoming is still a confusion. When will I know? Will I ever know? Do I need to know? Shall I just be living in the moment? After all, that's all there really is. The reality of life is but this moment, and it's my choice whether I enjoy it or not. Thank you. And I um, don't know where she is, but she's oh, no. <laughs> right here. <laughs> and, uh, and the poetry down here is Jennifer Sue. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer's right over here. I just wanted to take a quick uh, second to invite you all. I'm Francis Hahn. And I teach the poetry classes at Taos High School. Along <laughs> with my co coach, Orion Servio. <laughs> he's here somewhere, or was here. I think he's still here. Um, and we just want to invite you to uh, come back to this gallery on Sunday from 2 o'clock to about 4. 
we're going to be uh, having a great number of the kids from the Taos High School poetry class and poetry team all reading their poems here. And we're asking for your affordable donations. We have to raise a great deal of money each year to go to nationals. And so it, if it weren't for the 99%, we would never go. So, Woo! Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on up. of the United States of America. The United States, the land of freedom, the land of peace, the place where people escape to because the streets are lined with diamonds that shine in the shadows of democratic demonstrations. <laughs> Tiptoe on the frame of a black and white balance. Gray skies lie shyly under the covers of sundown. Sometimes sundown comes with no sleep. Just keep your eyes open or you just might miss the next Great Depression. Is change what we really need or another economic breakdown? Take down the government like taking down Osama. Obama, you promise change for the better, change for the poor, and change for the people. Where are the people now? Occupying streets guarded by tall walls and tasers, why not praise her for her voice? She's just trying to spread a little change. I always thought that was the point. But now all signs point at foreign policies, please. Stop signs are laid out under the sun, melting in the presence of our frontline cops. Frontline cops dropping hits and hard phrases. What phase is this? And to the republic for which it stands. Standing up with footprints embedded on the dark side of the moon, trying to spray paint rainbows, while all they ended up with is a bloody brick wall. A brick wall in empty halls because the students are too busy killing each other to pick up a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. Because if everyone lived by the laws of Atticus Finch, the world would be such a fair place. Wasn't the government supposed to be who kept us safe? Who take care of the fighting, the bombs, and balancing the federal budget? Cut it to a fantasy now. The government sits in a golden throne, feeding seeds to corporations and confederations that plead on their knees because they are the 1% that made it out alive, out of one nation, under God, an indivisible disconnection. Sculpted from God's sturdy hands of mud and clay, a disconnection that holds together because the people in power like to play with paint. And paint a portrait of promising pockets that are heavy with diamonds. Diamonds intended for the soldiers dying in Iraq. Those are the guys who love to bring democracy, but they walk into the states to fight a fucking idiocracy with leaders and cheaters that play number games with the rest of the 99%. Not the congressman who flirts with the first lady. Just the lady who comes by to clean the yard once a week and the janitor who lives down the road. Maybe even the guy who has to choose between his home and his groceries. <clears throat> Fighting to break the wall, separating 100% of America with cardboard signs and pieces of support because only light can drive out darkness and only love can drive out hate. I agree, Mr. King, a man who won't die for something is not fit to live. When lives are leaving because of lies that can easily enough be drowned in the sea, but backlashes full of fists and fury will only knock things a couple points higher. So submit to the only MLK who once told us that at the center of nonviolence stands the principle of love. This is brought to you by the New York City General Assembly occupying Wall Street and Liberty Square urging you to assert your power. For years, everyone has kept their secrets away. Because secrets... Reveal what we don't want to hear because fears wash away the will to change. But we will no longer remain silent because we are the 99% with the power to change for the better, change for the poor, and change for the people. Change for the goddamn United States. Change for the beggars drop coins in their cups because our cities have become overcome with corruption. Change for the people who know their salaries are being cut to satisfy government contracts. They are the ones about to act now. That 1% of society is backing in the fields of reigning Benjamins because they know they're safe there. They know that then security runs in and bars off the people, that invisible crowd that tells horrifying stories of no health care that they, they can't even begin to understand. Deny students their education, 
hold them hostage with debt because getting paper is more important than getting proper knowledge. These kids are the frames to the future. So is it fair to strip them of broken dreams and blackened books? These crooks are, accept are accepting college applications that wash in a wave of black widows with webs stretched across the campus since they control the area. They dominate over the kids who've got brains but a burning budget. Line the streets with brick wall protests that are now being knocked down. Not by glass and machine guns, but rather with masks that visualize anonymous liberty and justice for all who see the idea of occupations that bleed through to the smell of green. The suffocation from fumes that have overtaken our nation, protest corporations in a corporate world, it's time to occupy America. Because we are the 99% that will no longer tolerate the greed, corruption, and inequality of the 1%. Thank you. It's only made so long ago we can't remember making it. And it's weathered beautifully. And I've been enjoying his work in the in the parks gallery for, you have to put it for a long time oh yeah um, so I was really delighted when I found out he was my partner and that he was willing to do a painting after a poem I had written very recently but I didn't have time to write another one for the show and I walked in late and I saw this painting across the room and I knew it was from my poem because the light in the painting was the light that was in my brain when I was working on this this is called contract Sometimes we put aside the big questions if we can have a few hours in thinned air, full of snows breathing, full of trees breathing beneath snow, the weight of winter so entrenched we can feel the whole earth still. And the mountain seems to accept what we've slashed into it, chainsaws whining through summer air, so in winter, we can claim a freedom our bodies were not designed for. We rack it down its sides, our inefficient uprightness carried back up on cables drilled into rock. Beneath the fiberglass and metals, the custom-fitted plastics, the graphics and pomp we clamp to our fragile feet, the mountain keeps a poise that resists without rejecting us. But if we're willing to receive it softly through the fragility of our feet and open ourselves to its dips and gullies, its glades, its silence, if we're willing to absorb the force of a solitude that makes us disappear, the mountain opens in us a third eye to find the places that will let us fly safely and land without breaking our new contract with gravity. We, whose young remain helpless longer than young ermine or deer. We, whom gravity waits and slows even in our prime, small wonder we're not extinct. The mountain, though it remembers, allows us to be gods for a time <laughs> without doing harm. Home is called dwelling. We live in this world to dwell in possibility, to make believe we live in a world of consequence and cadence. We live in this world to caress meaning into palette, pixels, onomatopoeia. We live in this world so dominant sevenths reign in minor keys until gut lag and susto become just bearable. We live in this world as Buddha before Mara. We place our palms upon the earth. We are here. Like koi in cold water, orange arrows of time and timelessness. We swing into action on behalf of persimmon, saffron, papaya. We live to praise birds of paradise, blue-tailed damsels, effervescent coral reefs, serrated celebrations of life in solution, curvilicious aquatic naiads, diaphanous mango flame skimmers, we live in this world in the name of we the people, clever 
and clueless, <laughs> bleeding into nebulas of, buddy, can you spare a dime? We live in this world, moving from slow walking to sad singing. We live in this world until a crescendo of creation takes us home. We live in this world until we flame into photons, burst into indigo, vanish into verse. I have a couple of repeating lines, and so I want you to be my chorus. At the end of each stanza, there's a, there's a sentence sort of like, and the water was cool. And then you repeat it, and the water was cool. Okay, we'll see if we can do it. <coughs> the breath of our song. The water was cool beneath the lily pads when I was young. Toddlers tried to catch us in their hands, but we slicked our tails and shot away across the open water in schools. Water walkers were peaceful on their pontoon feet, dragonfly wings of blur too fast to see. We had streetcars and trolleys. Labor unions were strong, and far away unfolded a war they said would end all wars. And the water was cool. And, and the water was cool. We grew long legs. We learned to leap high in the air to catch flies on the wing. We croaked and sang to each other through the humid spring nights. Clouds of our tadpole young swam among rich koi. But still, there were jobs, houses, and cars. Corporations were regulated, and television was just a small black and white flicker in the night. But blood was spilled on civil rights marches, and the water got warmer. And, and the water, water got, got warmer. War upon war shook our water world. Wars of conquest, wars of plunder, until the word war was replaced with other words, and meaning dissolved in the babble. The powerful cooled their factories with our pond water, and they tied us in knots with loops of the law. Spin twisted the news, and advertisers seduced us where we sat in the rich bottom silt spellbound. And the water got warmer, and, and the, the water, water got warmer. Our water seethes with chemicals. We struggle to breathe. Algae turns brown. We both hunger and fatten. Our water is forced underground to squeeze out oil. The ground bucks and splits open in pain.